In this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about publishing your app to the web. So let me show you this app. So we've got some simple authentication, and then you can put a word in, reverse it, and hear it. TechServe. Okay, so let's set this up for shipping it on the web. So the first thing we need to do is tell Flutterflow what platforms we wanna to publish to. So we wanna come over here to platforms and select which one. And that's because Flutter is a powerful framework that produces code for all of these different platforms. So we're gonna come over to web and select that. Once we do that, when you come over to this menu right here, we get this new option here to publish your app to the web. That wasn't there before, but now we see it because we've clicked this on. But before we do that, we're gonna do some other configurations. So now we wanna come over to web publishing right here where you get all the options related to publishing on the web. Here, we've got another button for publishing. That's the same one as in here. And then down here, we've got a bunch of different options. The first one is to set the site URL. Now, by default, you're gonna have this subdomain name right here, but I want my own custom domain. So let's go get one of those. Now, of course, you can get your domains wherever you get your domains, but I'm gonna get mine from Google domains. I mean, Squarespace. All right, so let's see if we can get word reverser. Beautiful, let's grab this and check out. All right, great, we've purchased our domain right here. Let's click into it and go to manage domain settings. All right, next, we need to configure our DNS settings. So let's go back into Flutterflow and grab those. So let's scroll down to custom domain and put our domain in. And when we put our domain in, we get our DNS settings. So we've got an A record right here. Let's just copy it and let's come into edit DNS. And Squarespace puts in some default DNS, but we're not hosting it on Squarespace, so we can just delete that. And let's add a record right here. The host is at, type is an A record, and our IP address, beautiful. And then our CNAME record. Copy that, add another record. This is dub, 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 CNAME, and there we go, save. All right, this is all set up. Now we just go back to Flutterflow, press connect now that we've got all the DNS set up, and beautiful, we're connected. Now, just because we're connected doesn't mean that our app is currently being served. We have to publish again for it to become effective. But once again, let's hold off on that until we get everything set up. Okay, so let's scroll up here. Let's deal with SEO. The first option up here is your SEO title. That is, this is your open graph settings. So whenever someone shares a link to your website, the title that Twitter or X or Facebook will use will be this title right here. So I'm just gonna call it Word Reverser. Next, you've got your site description, which is the open graph description. So once again, this will be data pulled when you're sharing this. So reverse any word and hear it. Finally, you've got your page title. So this is just your title tag. So this will be used in search engines result pages, as well as on the tab in browsers. Now, if your app has multiple pages and you want those different pages to rank for different queries, different topics, then you wanna use individual page titles. Once you click that on, then this will disappear because it'll pull the page titles from these root settings right here and you get this page title option. And if you're not seeing that, you can just click off the canvas here or click on your root widget and that's where you'll see these root settings. Okay, let's jump back into the settings. I'm not gonna have individual page titles, so I'm just gonna call it the same thing, word reverser. If you're filling out all of this SEO information, you probably want search engines to know about your app. And in that case, you want to allow search engine indexing. When this is not on, so when it's unchecked, Flutterflow will add a no index tag into your head in your HTML. This is a tag that tells search engines to not index your page. That is, don't crawl it and don't serve it in search results when people are searching for things. But we want people to find this so there won't be a no index tag added. Next, if you want your app to be showcased in our marketplace, you can turn this on. And if you want your app to be a PWA, a progressive web app, then you can turn this on. Now, if you don't know what a progressive web app is, it gives you two things. It allows users to install your app and gives them offline access. Now, one thing to remember is that offline access doesn't include things like network calls. So if your app is communicating with a backend or making API calls, you still need the internet for that. Next, you've got the option to use Canvas Kit. Now, what is this? Well, when you publish your app, you have two different web renderers to choose from. Now, wait, why do I need a web render? Like, why don't I just run the Flutter and Dart code? Well, the web doesn't support Flutter and Dart, just like it doesn't support most programming languages. So you need to use a renderer that the web does support. And you have two options, Canvas Kit or HTML. So if this is unchecked, it's going to use the HTML renderer. If it's checked, then it uses Canvas. Okay, so which one do I wanna use? 
Well, Canvas Kit uses the Canvas API. That's just an HTML5 API. And it has faster performance, but you have to download the Canvas Kit, which is about 1.5 megs. So the first contentful paint will be slower. That is for you to be able to see anything will be slower. But after that, your app will be faster. So when the user is navigating around and clicking buttons and doing stuff, that'll be faster. So if your app has a lot of widgets, use Canvas Kit. HTML uses HTML, CSS, and SVG. It's better for SEO and it has a smaller download size. But if you have a lot of widgets, it'll run slightly slower. Okay, next you can select a favicon. That's that little icon you see in the browser, icon you see in the browser tab. Keep in mind, it needs to be 32 pixels by 32 pixels. Next, let's set our social share image. This is another one of those open graph features. So when someone shares it, it'll pull an image and that'll be this image. Next, we've got our custom headers. So if you need to add any other metadata to your website or verification for Google Search Console, you can do that here. These are tags that are gonna go into your head section of your website. Awesome. Finally, we've got our deployment history that you're gonna see down here once you start deploying. Finally, we need to do a check for platform features. So if we go up here, we can see that we get one warning here that says platform support share action by icon is not supported on web. And that's because I'm using an action on this page right here with this icon for sharing, but that's not supported on web. Now, this is a warning, not an error, so you can publish it just fine. It just won't work. Now, if you're planning to just ship on web, then you can find another solution, whether it's custom code or a custom pub dev package, or if you're shipping to multiple platforms, you can just check for the platform and then conditionally show or hide it. So I'll give you an example right here. So I've got my icon selected and let's come into this conditional visibility option and let's just turn it on. So what I wanna do is I wanna check if the user is on the web. So what's gonna happen here is that this is checking for a Boolean condition. So whatever gets evaluated here has to be true or false. And if it's true, it will show this icon button. If not, then it will hide it. So I can go down to global properties right here because we've got a global property is web, that is, if the user is on web, this variable will be true. So let's select this, but we actually don't want this because this means that it will be shown when it's on the web. So we just want to apply the opposite statement. Okay, beautiful. All right, we're ready to publish. So let's come over here and you can select which domain you wanna to publish to. Typically, you'll use your subdomain for a development environment, and then once that's good, you use your main domain for your production environment. But for the demo, we're just gonna to publish to both. Beautiful, there it is, we've deployed, and now let's check it out. All right, here we are. We've got our title, we've got our favicon, so let's sign in, and let's do an important one. OCAT Lab. Beautiful, and that's how to publish your web app on Flutterflow.